Hello everyone, I'm Jarrell from Sungrand. I'm an old-time gold prospector from the Gold Rush era, and I'm developing a JRPG titled Breath of Thunder. I'm currently running a Kickstarter campaign, and I wanted to answer some of the questions that all of you have been asking. So, uh, before we get started, I just want to share with you that we do have the game that is targeting different platforms. The core version of the game will take me about six months to finish, and the other versions will follow after each one taking between three months. Some of the platforms I can develop a bit faster for, so I could honestly get the game finished on different platforms within two months, some games within three months. I currently have the uh, base version of the game with the uh, core framework started on the DS and the Vita. These versions uh, will receive something special coming in the next few days based on a poll that I put up and plenty of people voted on. I've been hearing from so many people that wanted a 3DS version. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do a 3DS version, and that is because I am an official 3DS developer. I'm registered with Nintendo. The same goes for Wii U. I made the very final games for the 3DS and Wii U only because so many people online uh, over the years have been asking me to make more 3DS and Wii games. And that is where the difference is. I am not a developer that sets out to uh, become rich by trying to appeal to the widest possible audience. I want to make games for people who just really want a game made for them. People have been asking me to bring games to the Atari VCS for a while now, and so I went and got an Atari VCS, I started developing on it, and I registered as a developer. And that is because people asked me for it. Um, to tell the truth, I guess I'm opening up a little bit. I, I'm a little bit of an underdog. Um, I like fighting on the side of the underdog, and for people that maybe didn't, you know, uh, get exactly what they wanted for their console, uh, those are the people that I want to fight for. Those are the people that I want to make a game for. Uh, I love all these old consoles just as much as you guys, uh, and you can very clearly see that. I've already shown examples where I've run uh, ROMs that I've, uh, just quick uh, proof of concept ROMs that are prototypes running on the Atari Jaguar, the, um, the Sega Saturn, and honestly the Saturn is going to be one of the easiest ones to develop for. So, uh, hopefully within the next two hours I will be launching a Vibe Check teaser. So it's not a demo. Demos generally, there's a significant amount of content. You can play a whole bunch of stuff. A vibe check is more just a, a small experience that allows you to give Breath of Thunder a vibe check. You can see whether the style of the game is, is right for you, if the style of storytelling, the atmosphere, the music, the graphics, if that's something you're interested in. So I will make that playable on PC. I'll try to make it playable on the web browser. Honestly, I've never... Um, stuck a game on, on web browser through Unity, so uh, I'll just see if the performance is acceptable enough and if I can get that and make it easy for people to play. But I will be grabbing um, my uh, DS and my Vita here. People have been voting for these. People want a vibe check teaser for these two. So I will be making sure that I create a vibe check teaser so you can run it on your DS and I will also do that for the Vita as well. So you'll be able to play through a small town in the Vibe Check teaser. You'll be able to talk with some NPCs, pick up some items, uh, and just get a feel for the world, get a feel for the game, and see if that's something that you're into. So the reason why I don't have time to produce a full demo right now is because I am a commercial games developer, and I'm in the middle of finishing two games right now. I'm finishing a Gorgeous Sword, Long Hard Justice, and Sweet Abominations, both of those will be for the Nintendo Switch, Steam, and Atari VCS. People have been asking me to bring my games to the PlayStation and Xbox. I do not currently own a PlayStation or Xbox. I do not own a development kit for the PlayStation. And so if I were to develop for those consoles, I would have to go and buy a development kit for the PlayStations. Uh, people told me that you can run your Xbox in developer mode. Still, those consoles are very expensive. And to be totally honest with you, uh, I am internally funded entirely, so I do exactly what I want with my studio, but that means that I constantly have to launch new games, and by doing so, I'm paying the bills, I'm supporting my studio, but I don't actually have the disposable income to buy uh, what amounts to like a $600 console, 
you know, whatever it is here in Australia. They're very expensive. And I don't do that because all of the revenue that I make goes directly back into my development of these games. So at the moment, I don't have time to produce a full demo because people expect a demo to be quite robust. So if you tell them that you're going to give them a demo and you give them something that is significantly smaller, it's going to be quite disappointing. So what, what I'm producing is a vibe check teaser. It'll give you a chance to just start exploring the lore and the story of Breath of Thunder. So one of the questions that I've received lately is, how do you write such interesting dialogue? Uh, people that have seen a little bit of the uh, vibe check teaser, for Breath of Thunder, and of course my Silver Falls games, which people have been playing for years, is every dialogue, every every uh, conversation that you have in games, how do you adjust the uh, exposure on this? Can I adjust the exposure with this? That's that's a zoom slider. Okay. Wow, I look like a I look like an old person here, not knowing how to use a, a phone. But I am an old timey gold prospector, so don't hold it against me, right? Okay. So let me see if I can just fix the exposure there. So every conversation in a video game, every line of dialogue, you have to view that uh, as you, the writer, as you, the developer, you have to view that as a journey. There is a starting point to your journey, and there is an end point to your journey. So when you're writing dialogue, the most important thing you need to consider is what is the point of that dialogue. If the point of the dialogue is just to put in some, you know, woo-woo, anime, waifu sort of, you know, drivel, don't waste your time. You've wasted the player's time by putting garbage dialogue in there. There has to be a point to your dialogue, and that point should be what is this accomplishing? You should either give the player a chance to understand and explore that game world more, to understand a character more, to learn something about how a character feels, to learn something more about a character's past, where they've been. You need to be able to either use it to express someone's intentions or uh, help the player in some way in terms of what is the player feeling. So many games out there don't even take into account the player's feeling. Guiding the player's feeling through the experience of a game is so important, and I've played so many games time and time again where it's clear to me that the, the, the developers do not even consider that. So when I develop my games, that is one of the most things that I am, uh, one of the most important things that I consider is guiding the player's feeling through the experience. So the way that I write dialogue is I determine, I decide what is the point of this dialogue, what does it need to accomplish, where does it need to go? If the dialogue is an adventure, where does it start? Where does it need to end? And when, say, for example, you are on a road trip, you don't want to take necessarily the most direct route to your destination. You want to take the most interesting route to the destination. So there's so much nuance that you can uh, implement into your lines of dialogue in your game. It's not just what you are saying. It's the way you are saying. But also, and this is a bit higher level when it comes to writing, um, is... What are you not saying? What are you not saying that the player expects to see? If the player expects a character to say something and to say something in a certain way, if the character does not say that, it's often more interesting. So by having a character not say something that is expected, you know, for ex the most basic example for that would be if character, you know, uh, a says to character B, character A says, how are you doing today? And character B, if you understand the concept of character B as having a terrible time, they've been, it's been just terrible, t been rough, you would expect character to B to say, oh, I've had, a bad, I've had a bad week, you know, it's not good. But it's more interesting if character A says, hey, how have you been? And character B says, everything's great. Oh, man, everything's just fantastic. That's more interesting because you know that that's wrong. You know that's a lie. And that opens up the opportunity of, wait, why did character B lie in that situation? Why did they say they're fine when you know, as the viewer, you know they're not fine? And that is the key to writing interesting dialogue. Those are the techniques that I employ with Silver Falls. And that's the sort of writing that I'm employing in Breath of Thunder as well. A couple other questions before we wrap up is, how long will the core game be? I'm aiming for the core storyline of Breath of Thunder to be around the 20 hour mark. If you rush through it, you can get through it a bit faster, but there's going to be a significant amount of optional content in the towns. There's going to be optional towns that you don't even need to go to, optional um, environments, 
like dungeons and forests that you don't even need to go into, but you will be rewarded um, with awesome abilities. Your characters will gain new traits. So characters in Breath of Thunder have a mechanic called traits. They're not abilities like what you perform in battle. Well, they're not skills that you perform in battle. They are passive abilities that modify what your character does in battle. So say, for example, I'll just make something up like a trait called, you know, 25% counter. So whenever a character gets hit by a physical attack, then there is a 25% chance that they will counterattack. That could be an example of a trait. So by doing optional content, by exploring these towns that you don't necessarily have to go to, by exploring dungeons that you don't have to go into, your party members can gain new traits permanently, and it can change the way that you go through your adventure. There will be 10 playable characters that are part of the storyline in uh, Breath of Thunder, so uh, the party size will consist of five, and you'll get to basically play how you want, you know, use the characters that you want, unless the storyline dictates that has to be a specific character. There will be eight optional characters that are in there, so you can explore. If you want to play through the game multiple times, you can play through with the optional characters and mix things up, because every character functions very differently. No character is a jack-of-all-trades, and um, we do have a the highest tier for our Kickstarter uh, funding is that you get to be added as a playable character. It's it's in there in case, you know, like a, if like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos want to throw in some of their lunch money. So that is, wow, it's uh, getting very bright out here, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, if you want to do a bunch of, you know, a lot of the uh, optional, um, you know, exploring and adventuring, you, you're going to get significantly more out of the game. So I need about six months to finish the core version of the game to launch on modern platforms and generally around three months for each of the versions afterwards. So after I launch the core version, I will work on each specific version of the game, launch the first version. The communities for those various uh, platforms can give me feedback, and then I can maintain these games long term and keep improving them and updating them uh, as, as uh, we see fit. So thanks very much. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, wow, it's getting, it's getting so bright out here in sunny Australia. I got to get back to gold mining because I'm an old-time prospector. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And I please keep an eye out for the, um, the Vibe Check teaser and share the Kickstarter around. Uh, we we uh, really need to, to share more to get people uh, interested and to see the project so we can reach those stretch goals and reach other platforms. Take care, everyone.